Welcome again. Right now, I am doing a special video entitled The Top 5 Things You Need to Know About Paul and His Epistles. It's very, very important here because you see, most Christians, they stake their entire Christian doctrine upon the writings of Paul. You need to know how to read the letters of Paul, how to interpret it, how to view it. Did you know that most of the most damnable heresies that has ever hit the church since the days of Jesus was founded and rooted in the epistles of Paul. So here we go on our top five things you need to know about Paul and his epistles. Number five, that Paul did not replace Matthias. You see, there's this erroneous idea that, you know, Paul replaced Matthias. Now you know that Matthias, in Acts chapter 1 was the man who replaced Judas, okay? There was Jesus and then there was the 12 disciples, the 12 students. The word disciples here means students, okay? It's just a fancy word for students. Jesus was the rabbi, the teacher, and he had his 12 students. We all know what happened to Judas, but the book of Acts says that Judas was replaced by Matthias. Acts chapter 1 is very clear here. The Lord handpicked Matthias to replace Judas. Now, let me give you a question. Did the Lord handpick Judas? Is there any evidence that we have where Jesus was just walking along and somehow he met Judas and he said, come and follow me? We know he did that with several of his other disciples, but did he do that with Judas? There's no record of it. Judas, it seems like he just kind of tagged along. And some people say, well, Matthias just kind of dropped out of the scene and Paul replaced Matthias. Matthias did not drop out of the scene. Just because Matthias is not mentioned after Acts chapter 1 doesn't mean that he dropped out. There were a lot of other disciples that were not mentioned too. Jesus, when he went around choosing his disciples, he could have chose Paul if he wanted to. He didn't. He didn't choose Paul as one of his 12. And in the book of Acts chapter 1, when they chose someone to replace Judas, the Lord could have done anything. Send an angel, speak to them face to face, show up and say, hey, Paul over here, take him. He's the man. But he didn't. Paul was not even qualified. It's very clear. Paul was not qualified to be part of the 12. The qualifications had to be that those who were eligible to replace Judas had to be people who were in Jesus' presence and who followed Jesus right from the beginning. People who were there, who walked and talked with Jesus right from the beginning. Paul was not. Matthias was. Paul was just a newbie on the block. Paul was just a rookie compared to the apostles, okay? Number four thing you need to know about Paul and his epistles. Paul is not a prophet. Paul is an apostle. The word apostle is just a fancy English word that is transliterated out of the Greek apostolos. Apostolos, which means simply one sent with orders. Suppose you're at work and your boss sends you over to the other side of the room to do something. You become, in essence, an apostle of your boss. Suppose I send, well, good old Billy Boy over here to go get me uh, some water in the store. Well, Billy Boy goes to the store to get me some water. He becomes an apostle of Christopher because he is sent with orders. It doesn't mean that everything he says on the way is my word. No, the same goes with Paul. Paul is sent to the Gentiles by the Lord. It doesn't mean that everything, he's just all of a sudden just became a perfect man. So Paul is a, an apostle not a prophet. He never says, Paul, the prophet of God to the church in Rome. Paul, the prophet of God to the church in Galatia. No, he's like Paul, an apostle. Someone who has just got orders from the Lord to go somewhere and to do something. That's all. See, a lot of people put Paul on the same level as, well, let's say someone like Isaiah or Jeremiah or even Jesus himself, okay? Paul is not a prophet. Paul is not the Lord. Paul is just an apostle. And that leads me to number three. Paul is not always right in everything he says. 
And we see this clearly in Acts chapter 27. He was on that boat and he told everybody, the boat's going to be lost, everything's going to be lost, and lives are going to be lost. Well, guess what? Lives were not lost. Okay? Everybody's life was saved, contrary to what Paul said. Okay? So he's not always right. He wasn't perfect in every word that he spoke. Number two. Not everything Paul said was the word of God. And Paul admits this in his own epistles. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let's look at it. Paul was just talking about marriage here. And in verse 6, he says, But this I say by way of concession, not of commandment. He was saying, what I'm saying to you right now, I'm saying to you just because, well, I, because I can. It's, I don't have a commandment of the Lord in, in regards to this. Let's check on another verse. Verse 12. But to the rest, I, not the Lord. Check that out. Not the Lord say. I, not the Lord say. For those of you who say that the Bible is the word of God and every single word is the word of the Lord, everything is in the Bible from cover to cover is the word of the Lord, guess you didn't read your Bible, did you? I mean, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12, Paul made it clear. The rest of the stuff I'm going to talk about here, it's not God. It's not the word of the Lord here. It's me. It's my own judgment on things. But just as a little bonus, let's check out verse 40. But she is happier if she stays as she is in my judgment. And I think, uh, I, I, I think that I also have God's spirit. You don't hear people talk like that today. Well, I think I got the Spirit of God. I think I got the Spirit of God. I think I got the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul said. I think I do. And again, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. That which I speak, I don't speak according to the Lord. I, I don't speak according to the Lord. But as in foolishness and this confidence of boasting. So, uh, not every word that Paul said here in his epistles is the word of God. You need to understand that. And the number one thing you need to know about Paul and his epistles, Paul proved in Acts chapter 21 that he never preached against Torah. What he said, he didn't mean it to be against Torah like that. He didn't mean it to be interpreted like that. He made that very clear in Acts chapter 21. Paul was under the 12 apostles. Paul was just new on the block, you know? I mean, so after his missionary journeys, he came back to the apostles to report back to the apostles. He came home, so to speak, and reported to his authorities. And they were like, oh, that's great, Paul. You know, it's great what God is doing among the Gentiles, but we've got a big problem, Paul. We've heard rumor that you preach against the law of Moses and against the customs of the Jews. Is that true, Paul? Is that true? And so the apostles were like, listen, Paul, you need to prove to the world that you are not anti-Torah, that you don't preach against Torah, that you don't preach against the law of God, that you didn't tell anybody anything against the law of Moses. So what we want you to do is we want you to do the most challenging thing in the Torah, the most challenging thing in all the Torah to do. Take the Nazarite vow, the most expensive vow to take. And you know what? Not only you, but you need to really prove yourself, Paul. Prove that you walk according to the law. Prove that you are Torah observant. And I know this might cost you everything, and that's maybe why he lived in a rented house there in Acts chapter 28. I know this might cost you everything, but not only pay for yourself, but pay for four other men, all five of you. The bill's on you, Paul, because you need to prove to the world that what they think you said, what they think you said, is not really what you meant, Paul. And so Paul proved to the world that he was not against Torah. That's why he was not charged. That's why the only charge the Jews had against him, actually the Sadducees had against him, was that he preached the resurrection of the dead. That's the only thing they had against him. I mean, go back to the book of Acts. Check it out. So when you're reading Paul's epistles, when you are quoting Paul's epistles, and when somebody quotes it to you, remember those things. And as always, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.